Belly Button Boy, written by Peter Maloney and illustrated by Felicia Zakaskis. Good afternoon, Youngstown scholars and families. My name is Jody Kosick. I am an instructional coach at both Volney and Kirkmere Elementaries in Youngstown. I am back here with you today in my favorite reading spot, my big comfy chair, and I'm going to share with you another one of my favorite stories. Today we are going to read Belly Button Boy. Belly Button Boy was written by Peter Maloney and illustrated by Felicia Zakaskis. Billy, right here, also known as Belly Button Boy, loves to dig and you can see that he's holding his shovel right here. He loves to dig in all kinds of things. Dirt, sand, mud, all sorts of things. But what Billy does not like to do is Billy does not like to get washed up. That's right, he likes to dig and then not get cleaned up afterwards. So Billy ends up with a big problem. What do you think that problem might be? Mm, those are all good ideas. We are going to read Billy Button Boy together and find out what Billy digging and not washing up has to do with his belly button. Before we do, there is a word that the author uses sometimes in our story that I want to make sure that you understand. Um, the word is navel. Can you say navel? Nice job. Can you say it one more time? Awesome job. How about in a whisper voice? Navel. Great job. How many sounds do you hear in the word navel? Can you guys finger stretch it with me? Navel. N-A-V-O. Navel. How many phonemes did you hear? Four. You're right. So I'm going to draw four boxes. What is that first sound we heard in navel? N. You're right. We heard an N. 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 A. What is the second phoneme that we heard? You're right. We heard an A. N a. What is the next phoneme? N a. V. We hear a V. You're right. N a. V. O. What is that last phoneme that you hear? Oh, I hear the L sound too. And this word is actually an E L. So our word is navel. Can you guys say that with me one more time? Navel. Nice job. Okay, boys and girls, let me tell you what navel means. I bet you don't even know that you have a navel. A navel is a belly button. You're right. You didn't know that? Look, now you learned a new word. The word is navel. What's the word, boys and girls? Navel. Right. When the baby lifted up his shirt, we could see his navel. What could we see? His navel. You're right. So in this story, belly button boy, sometimes the author Peter Maloney, instead of saying belly button, he says navel. Now you'll know what it means. Belly button boy by Peter Maloney and Felicia Zakaskis. Billy loved digging, the deeper the better, and some of that dirt got under his sweater. At the beach, Billy buried himself in the sand, and even his sister would lend him a hand. When people told Billy, you're covered with dirt, Billy just answered, well, dirt doesn't hurt. So soon Billy's navel was filled like a cup with all kinds of things that boys will dig up. Soot, lint, sand, grime, goop, crud, seed, mud, crumbs, gravel, grout, muck, loam, gunk, peat, topsoil. And under that dirt, that muck, grime, and grout, the tiniest seed had started to sprout. It grew through the night and then in the morning. It woke Billy up without any warning. There in his belly, a little bush stood and Billy just gasped. Oh, this isn't good. This was something he just couldn't share. 
He knew that his sister would tease him and stare. And as for his friends, they'd mock him and jeer. The things that they would say, he'd rather not hear. Hey, Billy, you look bushed. You belong in nursery school. You're no Billy. You're an herb. Ever trace your family roots? <laughs> so though it was warm, Billy put on long sleeves. He had to wear clothes that would hide all his leaves. He caught the school bus and kept to himself, then hid in the library behind a bookshelf. He leafed through a book on what made things grow, but the book didn't tell him what he needed to know. Like how in the world had this happened to him, to wake up one morning and have a new limb? He went to the boy's room and locked in a stall. He saw that his plant was now several feet tall. He raced past the gym and straight to the nurse. He had to go home before things got worse. The nurse sent him home, where up in his room, he looked in the mirror and cried, Oh, I'm in bloom. He knew it was time for him to reveal the truth he had tried so hard to conceal. His sister just screamed, It's all that I need. What can I say? My brother's a weed? His father turned white, perfectly pallid. He said to his son, you look like a salad. Although the problem clearly had shocked her, his mother just said, let's go see a doctor. Doc Dudley had seen him through fevers and flus, but Billy's new problem was medical news. Your case is a matter beyond this physician. I think a landscaper should treat your condition. Let's all go and hear what my gardener will say. He sees things like this in his field every day. The gardener was kind. Wisdom shone from his eyes. He looked Billy over and showed no surprise. The thing you've got here, green leafy and fruited, could best be removed if it were quickly uprooted. He gave a big tug, then uttered, I've got it! And now that I've got it, I think we should pot it. He looked down at Billy and said, With your pardon, a boy's belly button should not be a garden. You've got a great gift, son, for growing things green, but your navel is one place you've got to keep clean. Billy now washes himself head to toe, especially in places where dirt likes to go. He doesn't want this to happen again, though the gardener did tell him, Dirt is our friend. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this story as much as me, Youngstown families and boys and girls. When your parents tell you it's time for a bath, I hope you will agree. And don't forget to wash those navels.